Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Editorial Edge. I'm Bhuvan Apurvajha. You are joining me on a very special day, the 26th of July. Good morning, Mandeep. Good morning, Deepak, Arka. Good morning, Sai Krishna. Good morning, Tanu. Good morning. Guys, all of you are most welcome. So, let's uh, get started, shall we? Uh, we have three topics today. Okay, One that I, in fact, uh, had to include because that is going to happen in a few hours from now. At least, the motion will be probably be moved. That is of the no-confidence motion being brought forward against the government by the opposition. So, we need to take a look quickly, uh, revise the whole no-confidence motion bit. We are going to do that. Second is what we will look at is the India-Sri Lanka relations because again you had the Sri Lankan president who came to India, hosts of agreement were signed and uh, very interestingly, okay, before I introduce the whole class to you, very interestingly, what you find is that now Sri Lanka is gravitating towards India. In the middle, you must have heard that Sri Lanka has gone into the laps of China. Well, what you find is that has been undone. And that has been undone due to skillful diplomacy more than anything else and the use of economics by India. So, we'll try and understand that. Okay, We'll try and take a deep dive into the whole India-Sri Lanka relationship, the problem areas, the convergence areas, the challenges, all of that will follow. And then the third one is uh, we had the National Broadcasting Day, which was on the 23rd of July, so just a couple of days ago. So we'll take a look at broadcasting, you know. What is broadcasting and what are the organizations that are in broadcasting sphere in India? What is their relevance? You know, what's their statutory status? What's the use? If at all, uh, again, the conversation from the interview point of view that does, should the government get into broadcasting? Okay, all of that we'll discuss. Okay, good morning Kevin, Biswajit, UPSC Hunter, Soumya, Tanu, Monica, all of you are most welcome. Before we begin the class though, I think we should, uh, as students of, you know, various subjects and as just like someone who's wanting to be a part of the story of India, you know, if you were to clear the examination and become a part of the services, you'll become a part, in fact, uh, someone who will guide the whole story of India. So, I think it's important on this day, on this very special day, I began this class by saying that today is a very special day. Today is July the 26th. The whole con country is observing Kargil Vijay Divas. Yes. So, I have planned a session on this in the evening, this evening. But I think before we begin the class, I think we should all take a moment to remember and recollect the valiant efforts of all those individuals, you know, who gave up their lives, made the ultimate sacrifice for the nation. So, because again, today when you talk about, say, India being the voice of the global south or one trillion dollar, three trillion dollar economy and all of those lofty ideals and ambitions, I think that has been built on the bedrock of the sacrifices of such individuals. So, uh, on that note, you know, my humble pranams to all those who in fact made the ultimate sacrifice and who in fact were part of that war. I think that's only fitting that we do that, right? Good morning, dance floor. All right. So, let's begin. So, we had, uh, as usual, questions yesterday that I had introduced you to. And I had asked many students, in fact, all the students to go ahead and register their answers in the comment box. I received many answers in the email also. So, let's take a look, take a look at the questions first. Okay. The first question I had for you was, all rights of the people within a national park have to be settled. While in a sanctuary, certain rights are allowed, which is correct, in fact. You do find that, say, the national park, the whole focus is on keeping humans out. Okay. And in wildlife sanctuary, the focus is on protecting the uh, particular flora, fauna, whatever. Okay. But say certain rights are allowed to those forest dwellers or those who live within the fringes of the forest in case of wildlife sanctuary. National park, not so much. So this is correct. Livestock grazing is prohibited in the national park, absolutely correct. And can be allowed in a regulated manner in sanctuaries, again correct. A sanctuary can be upgraded to a national park, true. But a national park cannot be upgraded to a sanctuary. One way, movement is only possible. You can go up, you can be promoted, you can be demoted. All right. And a tiger reserve can have the following zonation. Now, please understand this. Core and critical are the same zones, in fact. Okay. These are just the synonyms that I used. Ideally, a tiger reserve has two zones, the core zone and the buffer zone. All right. So, purely on that basis, this becomes incorrect, which means your answer is one, two and three. Yes, the correct statements. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Okay. This was an easy one. This was not very difficult. So, Baksa is obviously in West Bengal. Those of you who are on Twitter, Parveen Kaswan, you know, if you have been following him, well, he is posted there. He regularly posts updates from there. So, Baksa Tiger Reserve is in West Bengal. The rest, Dudwa in Uttar Pradesh, Mudumalai in Tamil Nadu, 
Nagar hole in Karnataka, absolutely correct. So you have the two, three and four options that are correctly matched here. Next, Vagiri Hills. We discussed this in yesterday's class. Vagiri Hills is in Goa, a part of the Made uh, Wildlife Sanctuary, which is now being proposed to become a tiger reserve. That was the whole scope of our discussion yesterday. Okay, so this is true. NTCA's recommendations for designating an area as tiger reserve is binding. In fact, this is what the High Court observed. The, uh, what was it? The Goa bench, yes. The Goa bench of Bombay High Court observed this particular statement. NTCA is a statutory body, which means it was formed as an act of parliament. It came out of being as a consequence of an act of parliament. And it does have, say, public representation. So you have two MPs from the Lok Sabha and one from the Rajya Sabha who are a part of the decision-making body of the NTCA. All right, so this is true. So the correct statements here being all of the above. All statements here being absolutely correct. Okay, next move on. Deputy chairperson is subordinate to the chairman. Well, no. The deputy chairperson is not subordinate to the chairperson. In fact, he is directly responsible to the members of the Rajya Sabha. All right. He does work in coordination and collaboration with the ex officio, the vice uh, president, the chairperson. But he is in no way considered to be subordinate to the chairperson. All right. So this becomes incorrect. Schedule 4 of the constitution deals with allocation of seats. Quite easy, simple, straightforward. All right. UT of Chandigarh does not have a seat. In fact, it has zero seats. All right. If you have been following the news, you will find that uh, the MP from that place, Manish Tiwari, he has been uh, sending several representations asking for a particular representation from the UT of Chandigarh in the Rajya Sabha. However, at present, the status is that the Union Territory has no representation in the Rajya Sabha. All right. So, this is incorrect. UT of Jammu Kashmir does have four seats, correct, which means your options here become two and four. Clear? Let's go forward. Okay, this was a relatively easy question. Okay, I don't think this should be, have been much trouble. It's a straightforward question. Chairperson of the Rajya Sabha can allow you to address in whichever language you want, provided it is there in the scheduled language list. Besides English and Hindi, he does have that power. Correct. Article 348 of the Constitution states that all proceedings in the Supreme Court and every High Court shall be in English language is correct. In fact, this is one of the primary uh, criticisms also leveled against the judiciary. However, then there are some reasons also as to why the Supreme Court has taken this position. Okay, that's a conversation for another day, but this is correct. And the governor of a state with the previous consent of the president authorized the use of Hindi language or any other language for any official purposes of the state. In fact, you have had find, if you read the history of India, you will find several uh, very interesting references, you know, where a particular chief minister has written to another chief minister, say in Hindi language, and then the other chief minister has replied back in their uh, regional language, in their particular language, all right? And so this has been a, a problem area. However, then for official communication, it was decided that, well, you can send in an Hindi or an English translation if you are sending it in your particular language. So, this is correct too. So, the statements again are, all are correct. Fine. Maldhari in Gujarat, Zeliang Nagaland, Ong in Little Andaman. Unfortunately, the Abhuj Marias, like I told you, the Abhuj Mand, this particular area you find in Chhattisgarh. Okay. It's not in Jharkhand. So, the incorrect statements here being only four. And run of Kutch is predominantly both, again, it spans both in India and Pakistan, Sir Creek and Kori Creek, part of the Indus River Delta. And Indian wild ass that we discussed yesterday is near threatened. So the incorrectly matched, none. All right. So these were the questions, the outcome-based learning that we always focus on. If you got these correct, good. All right. I would encourage you that you go ahead and submit your answers to whatever questions we pose on a daily basis in the comment box. It will help you out. All right. And so let's look at those individuals who answer it correct. Well, again, once again, we have very uh, common uh, names here who are, again, taking active part and I'm thankful for that. To the rest, I implore you, go ahead, register your answers. It will help you out. All right. Good morning, TN Singh, Swati, Bulbul. Most of all of you, are in fact, welcome. Theke? So Arka, Jyotsna, Koda, Evergreen, Karuna, Swati, Mandeep, Shubham. Well done. Good. And in fact, a special mention of Karuna, 
I really liked her answers also. She had sent in uh, uh, an answer to the urban lakes question, which I had shared on uh, the group. And so uh, the efforts are appreciated. To the rest, continue the good work. I am receiving several answers, several responses. Make sure you continue this momentum going forward. Okay? Good. Let's go forward. So the big news for the day that we have, the opposition is moving a no confidence motion against the government. All right, that has been confirmed by a representative of the opposition last evening. Now, uh, for some reason, the Indian newspaper media likes to think or probably has selective memory. They are saying that, well, this is the first time uh, a no confidence motion has been brought forward against the government since 2003. All right. That's this is all that they're remembering. However, they forget that in 2018 also there was a no confidence motion moved against the present government that was defeated. All right. So first things first, if you read the newspaper and if you find this written, that this is the first time that 2003 ke baad no confidence motion move ho raha, that's incorrect, factually incorrect. All right. Okay. So article 75 sub clause 3, what does it say? Council of ministers, the collective responsibility to Lok Sabha only. All right. Now, more importantly, what we find is that there is no more mention of a no confidence motion in the constitution. In fact, it doesn't even use the word, consti uh, the word confidence. All right. So where do you find no confidence motion? Well, you find it in the rules of the house. Okay. Rule 198, it mentions that uh, the mechanism for testing this collective responsibility that the council of ministers swims together, sinks together. Okay. So the rule 198, well, that tests whether they will swim together or sink together. Take it. Rajya Sabha does not have procedure for moving a no confidence motion. They also don't have adjournment motion censure motion and one more which I want you to go ahead and figure out. There is one more motion that the Rajya Sabha cannot move against the government. All right. It's a, it's a very good opportunity for you to quickly revise all the motions. Okay. Forget the no confidence motion. It's a very easy concept. There is not, not a lot in fact to, for you to get confused in. However, what I suggest is quickly go ahead and revise say all the different other motions from cut motion to calling attention motion, censure motion, no day yet name motion, special mention, all of that, point of order. It's very easy, very simple. Okay. So you had 2003, what we all mo rem mostly remember when the government led by Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee, where it lost uh, the confidence of the house just by one single vote. Okay. However, what you find is that the no confidence motions history in India, it has been used several different times. And it does not take you long to figure out which Prime Minister would have probably uh, got to face the most no confidence motions. It is Indira Gandhi. Well, again, because there was a lot of opposition to the moves that she was making, which is why she faced the no confidence um, uh, motion close to around 15 times. All right. So we'll take a look at all of that also, because there is a particular question in the mains paper of, uh, not in the mains paper. Uh, there is a uh, question in the mains paper of 20, I forget the year, but it mentions about uh, the whole history of no confidence motion. Okay. Today's uh, uh, discussion on the India Sri Lanka also based on a mains question that was asked last year. So very important. Okay. So let's look at it now. No confidence motion. Any Lok Sabha MP, if he has 50 friends in the house who believe that his reasons or her reasons for bringing forward the no confidence motion are justified and if he or she has the support, well, that is then. It is taken against the Council of Ministers. Interestingly, you do not need any reasons. Okay, all you need is a notice plus 50 members. Okay? Now, if there are 50 me members of parliaments in the house, the motion is admitted and then the speaker allots a date or a day or a part of a day, whatever it is. The speaker then decides and allots that particular time period. What happens then? First, what happens is that you have the opposing party, the opposition or those who have brought forward this motion. They go ahead and explain their reasons if they choose to. That, well, this is why we are bringing forward this motion. This is why we are seeking to hold the government accountable. Thereafter comes the reply by the government. That can be given either by the Prime Minister or by a minister deputed by the Prime Minister. Normally, it is the Prime Minister who replies because he is the leader. Primus inter paris. First among the equals. Remember this term, guys? Yes, primus inter paris. So, being the leader, being the first among all of those council of ministers, Normally, it is the Prime Minister who gives that reply to the opposing party. Okay? 
So MPs who support highlight the shortcomings. Well, this is again not mandatory. Like I said, the reasons don't need to be stated. However, you find always, on, on, in fact, on all occasions that the opposition goes ahead and explains, levels the charges against the government. Why? Because again, it has been broadcast throughout the country, right? So you have those lev charges that are leveled. The prime minister then probably goes ahead and explains his position. Okay? You have the reply. Now, after that voting takes place, if the government loses the vote, you have to vacate the office immediately. Which is why when you go back to the Atal Bihari Vajpayee, his speech, if you were to listen to it on YouTube, the last few lines of the speech, very in fact uh, poignant lines, you know, and he says that, okay, this is it, I am submitting and I am straightforward heading to the president to submit my re resignation. Okay, I suggest you have a look, it's a three minute clip at most. So now, what happens again if suppose some uh, members choose to abstain? Right? What happens then? Suppose if you are again a part of the no confidence uh, motion, you are supposed to go and vote. What happens if you don't go at all? Well, then your vote is not counted. So your vote is subtracted from the total membership of the house and then the majority is arrived at. Okay? So the minimum time period, you cannot move it more than twice in a year. In fact, the last time that was moved was in 2018. Now, this is also another important factor to consider. The fact that you cannot move it for six months after you have moved it once is because you do not want this process to be again tedious, time and again. Okay? Once the confidence has been proved, you have six months. Thereafter, no, no problems at all. Again, the timing is important. So the opposition or the people who are leveling those charges also need to be aware of the timing. Because if you mess it up or if you falter in that no confidence motion, you do not get another shot for another six months. Clear? Let's go forward. So the history. Now the first no confidence motion that we all uh, recall was against Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. And the person who was opposing him that time was Acharya J.B. Kriplani. And the reason in fact was primarily to do with the failure of the Indian government in dealing with the Sino threat, the Indo-China war. Okay. So Acharya J.B. Kriplani had bought it first. Like I told you, Indra Gandhi, the subject of 15 no confidence motions. Again, a factual, <coughs> a factual uh, point that again is common sense. The prime minister that took the most controversial decisions was the subject of the most no confidence motions. All right. The first no confidence motion that eventually forced the resignation of the government was under Morarji Desai's administration, which was introduced twice. And like I told you, Atal Bihari Vajpayee's government lost the no-confidence motion just by one vote. All right. And you had the present Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi, who also faced the no-confidence motion in 2018. However, I think a thumping victory for the government by probably 195 votes. Yes, 195 votes in fact, not motions. All right. So this is a brief history of the no-confidence motion in India. It has been used as an instrument to seek accountability from the government. And in the case the motion is moved and accepted, well, if the voting holds in the favor of the people who are leveling the charges, the government has to vacate the office immediately. All right, there is no time frame within the stipulated time. No, immediate. Tuck se jau. Straight away president house jau. Resignation do up. Okay? Next. Let's look at this question now, guys. Very quickly. Let's have this. And uh, if, if you are, uh, what I would suggest is, this afternoon, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Lok Sabha begins at what time? 11? Go ahead and look at the house. I think they will probably suspend uh, question R also. All right. So go ahead and have a look at the Lok Sabha proceedings. You know, Sunset TV pe aega. So which of the following groups of motions are available to only Lok Sabha? No confidence motion, adjournment motion, call attention motion. What is the call attention motion, guys? Can someone quickly let me know in the chat? What's the point of this? What's the call attention motion? Let me know if you know about it. So I'll tell you in briefly. If there is a matter of urgent public importance for the concern of a particular minister, kisi minister ke ministry ka baat hai, jo ki jaldi se answer chahiye, thik hai? then call attention motion is called. Thik hai? You also have cut motion used in budget. If the house accepts the cut motion, it is taken to be a defeat of the government, which is why you will never find that cut motions are defeated, because then that is defeat of the government. All right. Censure motion. To censure a particular minister. All right. Please understand this now. No confidence motion is against the Council of Ministers. 
most of the parliamentary systems there are ways of individual accountability and collective accountability in india's case the no confidence motion is of the collective accountability whereas say the censure motion is of the individual accountability all right make a note of this because this will help you say frame your answers better nowadays upsc does seem to ask the larger macro overview you know they'll stop asking they have stopped asking questions from lakshmi kant so collective responsibility kaun sa individual responsibility kaun sa so let me know the answers in the chat in fact i have around questions from a to f i think all right so in the comment box mention your answers like this it's easy for me to collate all right i'll expect answers to all of these questions if the motion of thanks is not not passed by the house it amounts to defeat of the government does it motion of thanks after the government is sworn in or the first session of the year all right have a look at this whether it is correct or incorrect no confidence motion is designed to test the council of ministers while privilege motion is to censure a minister true or false call attention motion is to draw the attention of a minister to an issue of urgent public importance identify the correct statements you will leave an answer for all of this in the comment box next question the parties can issue whip what is a whip you must have read this also that uh, the congress party has issued a three line whip to all its uh, members of parliament to be present in the lok sabha today what does that mean it's a binding directive from your own party okay a whip is in fact an individual who manages the party members within the house and his directive is binding on all mps of the part particular party okay so if the congress whip has issued a, a directive saying all congress mps uh, have to be present in the lok sabha today if some congress mp does not become present or is absent or does not vote in line with the directives of the congress party then will he subject to action under the anti defection law all right whips cannot direct an mp or mla to vote according to party preference in the directions in the elections to the president of india post true or incorrect also can whips direct mps to vote according to party preference during no confidence motion minor difference however you ought to know किस टाइम विप का डायरेक्टिव बाइंडिंग होता है किस टाइम विप का डायरेक्टिव होता ही नहीं है या बाइंडिंग नहीं होता है मेक एन नोट ऑफ दैट आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट्स लेट मी नो इन द चैट बॉक्स लेट मी नो इन द कमेंट बॉक्स इन फैक्ट ठीक है टेक योर टाइम डोंट रश दीज क्वेश्चन आर डिजाइन टू टेस्ट योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑल राइट ओके लेट्स गो फॉर दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ द डे बाई द वे दिस क्लोज इज टूडे इट सेल्फ ट्वेंटी आई हैव बीन स्पीकिंग अबाउट दिस the optional batches prime importance and i'll tell you this in one line if you haven't prepared a optional by january first week take a re look about your attempt okay because uh, what you have done yourself is aap majhdhar mein atak gaye ho na prelims ka pura hua hai na mains ka pura hua hai aur uske baad aap karoge panic so agar panic nahi karna hai prepare prepare a optional now if you want to do it yourself good my best wishes with you if you want to seek advice guidance this is one forum that you can use okay if your optional subject is one of these go ahead quickly register for this the test series is a part of this process all right use the code ba live that assures that you get a discount and you can make the best use of this uh, test series plus the intensive guidance for your option the admissions are closing today 26th all right let's go forward now the india sri lanka relationship okay for 90s kids now this flag meant that you know cricket matches that's our only recollection all right india sri lanka relations now please understand that this is a historical linkage that we are talking about okay so you have a book in fact called the deepa vamsa deepa vamsa and another book called the maha vamsa all right these two books together both written in pali language together in fact outline the whole history of india and sri lanka first things first okay deepa vamsa and maha vamsa together outline the history of india and sri lanka okay so deepa vamsa in fact just it deepa vamsa in sinhalese the language of uh, sri lanka in sinhalese it means chronicles of the island so you can understand it's a history of the island all right so buddhism was introduced to sri lanka by the venerable mahinda who was the son of ashok 
during the reign of Sri Lanka's king Devanampriya Tissa. Okay, simple facts, no confusion here. Now, what you also find is that Sri Lanka has the longest running tradition of Sangha. You must have heard of this, no? The Sangha. So, the longest continuous history of Buddhism of any Buddhist nation with the Sangha having existed in a largely unbroken lineage since its introduction in the 4th century. Okay. So, you have seen you know, Buddhist nations like Myanmar, Bhutan. What you also find is other nations that exist. Okay. But, Sri Lanka has had this unbroken chain. Sangha is what? That community. That's an official forum where all the monks come together and say, discuss. You know, the way forward, the challenges, the path, that what we do on a daily basis, well, it's like the conclave, the Sangha. All right. So, India and Sri Lanka are again close on economic terms with India being the island's largest trading partner. So, again, the challenges that we had say seen in India-France, if you guys remember the India-France class, we had discussed now that, okay, the areas of convergence are almost everywhere. However, the trade is a factor that inhibits this Indo-French relationship. Well, in India-Sri Lanka, what you find is that we are closely integrated economically, people to people, culturally. All right. Now, cultural linkages, again, Hinduism, Buddhism, common factors for both. Now, you have also found that we have signed a nuclear energy deal to improve our relationship with Sri Lanka. A nuclear energy pact was signed in the year 2015. So, from religion to theology to say culture to now forward modern tech, a lot of collaboration between the two countries. Obvious, right? we are next door neighbors. Plus, Sri Lanka is at a very geostrategic place. When you talk about the Indian Ocean region, the IOR, right? So, what do you find? That the IOR, the primary routes, if you had to say a stopover point, in fact, if you look at the map, yes, if you look at this map here, so you have so the whole Arabian Sea on one side, the Bay of Bengal on the other side, the Indian Ocean down south, Sri Lanka is at a very vantage position, which is why, say, you are looking at China courting Sri Lanka, India, Again, next door neighbors, so we ought to have good relations with them, not just say economic considerations only. Take so now, the India-Sri Lanka relations, if you have to look at, let's go straight back to say 1987. Okay. Now, the Sri Lankan civil war is a very contentious issue. Okay. You had the Sri Lankan government versus the Tamils. India came in and you had a situation where the Tamils of Sri Lanka, the LTT, the Elams, they went against India, primarily due to the fact that they thought that, well, India was playing big brother. Also, the accord that was signed between the Sri Lankans and the Elams, that was not accepted uh, by uh, the, the Elams at all. All right. So, you had this situation where India got involved in this quagmire, if you can note this term, you know, that this was this quagmire that India got involved in in 1987. Okay. You had the Indo peacekeeping force that went in there. Operation Pavan was launched. We suffered close to around 1500 casualties. However, since then, you know, since those fractious relationship of say the 1980s, in fact, you had a former prime minister who was assassinated by the LTTE. So, you realize that the, the, the whole scenario was very grim that time. But then from there on to have come to now, where India and Sri Lanka are almost uh, like a very good partners, you know, there's a lot of convergence happening. However, there are still some areas of concern that need to be addressed. So, this whole trajectory is what we are going to explore right now. Okay? So, now first understand, why is it that India felt compelled to go? You know, India could have just avoided when the whole problem arose in Sri Lanka, the civil war arose in Sri Lanka. Why is it that India felt necessary? First, you understand this part now. Here you have Jaffna. Okay? Jaffna. So, what you found was that in this particular area, a large number of Tamil individuals from Sri Lankan side, they started congregating. Okay. And then the problem was that some of them made the trip across the sea, across say Gulf of Manar and the Park Strait. Okay. Now, straight away what you are looking at is a large scale migration happening. At the same time, individuals called for a Tamil Elam, which was a separatist movement which asked that the people of Tamil heritage of both India and Sri Lanka have a territory. And now the problem was that the territory was in Sri Lanka also in India also. So, the problem that India saw was that it was an affront, a threat on the territorial integrity of India. Okay. So, straight away India went in. 
to solve the issue that was cropping up here. So now once this happened, what you find is that the India Sri Lanka peace accord, okay, signed between uh, Rajiv Gandhi and the Sri Lankan president that time, which is now known as the 13th amendment in the Sri Lankan uh, constitution, the 13th amendment has become a bone of contention. So what does the 13th amendment talk about? So you have had the say the majority Sinhala population, the Tamils. The problem was between these two, India came in. So reasons that are quite again uh, complex, you had the Tamil uh, Sri Lankans go against India. Eventually a peace was formed, some sort of negotiations happened and then you had a working strategy that was applied. However, the problem was that the majority people were supposed to give powers of self-governance to the Tamil people. Okay. Now what you find is that creation of provincial councils was promised. Self-governance. Now the self-governance was promised. However, some factors have not been devolved yet. So what you find is, what you find is that say particular agencies like land and police have not been given to the Tamil population. Now India is championing that okay, respect the 13th amendment in entirety. Give the power, devolution of power up karo or pura karo be it land, be it police, be it housing, energy, whatever, give it fully and wholesomely. That hasn't happened till this date. Okay. So, India is for the creation, the, in fact, the maintenance, the complete acceptance and application of the 13th Amendment. All right. So, still a source of discontent. So, again, we are identifying one particular problem between India and Sri Lanka. The areas of convergence are many. Aapko wo samaj mein aagya hai. But the problem areas now, one, 13th amendment. Number two, let's go forward. The detaining Indian fishermen by Sri Lanka. If you are following question hour, okay. If you have been following question hour in both the houses, what you find is that say, uh, again, members of parliament from say Tamil Nadu, okay, Kerala, all of these uh, states, the members of parliament frequently raise the question that Indian fishermen are getting detained by the Sri Lankan Navy. In some cases, many fishermen of Indian origin, Indian side, have also been killed. Okay, So, this is a bone of contention, a very major bone of contention between India and Sri Lanka. Now, what is the problem? Let's look at this map again. The problem of what is the issue? So, you have the Park Strait here and the Gulf of Manar here. Okay, we'll discuss the environmental factors. What you find is that the Indian fishermen, okay, they come in and they practice something called deep sea trawling. All right. Understand what is deep sea trawling now. Okay. So the Indian fishermen have mechanized boats, mechanized trawlers, which they use to go ahead and fish in this particular area. In fact, this particular area largely. Okay. Now, in the process of trawling, what happens? Understand that too in one slide. So, you have the sea surface. Alright. You have a boat here. Okay. This is again a rudimentary boat. I am not really a good artist, but understand for the sake of understanding. Okay. So, you have a boat here. What it does is that it puts its net at entirely the benthic zone of the sea which is at the sea, sea uh, floor, you know. So, because it's suspended by a huge weight, okay, and it basically what it does is it brushes the whole benthic area. So, what it do, what does it do? It just not catches fish, it catches every other thing that is there at the sea floor. Do you understand that now? So, this mechanized trawling where you are using a huge weight and basically creating an area and just when you are going forward, you are dragging, pulling all of this with you together. So, what is happening in the sea floor? Pe jo kuch rahega, fish to rahega hi, fish ke larvae bhi rahenge. Okay? You will have, say, you'll, if you find coral, corals are also taken. All the marine ecosystem that lies at the sea floor, the benthic ecosystem, that is completely finished off by mechanized trawling. Now, what happens because of this? Understand the economic angle. Okay? Environment angle, we care about karte. Hai. Fishermen ke liye kya problem hai? Once you have the younger fishes that are there at the larvae, in fact, okay, they are also carried forward. 
So what you find is that the fish population depletes. Now you have fishermen who rely on these fishes for their sustenance. The Sri Lankan fishermen say, these Indian fishermen with their technology taking away our fishes. Their navy counteracts. Our fishermen get killed. Do you understand the whole uh, linkage here? Okay. So how do you go and address this now? Sustainable fishing. Alright. How do you do that? Again, how, who will share the costs? Okay. Because again, it's very expensive. If you have to make the transition from say trawling to deep sea fishing, which is again a different technique. Okay. This is a cost intensive shift. Who is going to make this? Who will invest the money? You can't expect the fishermen to invest the money. Which means both India and Sri Lanka need to create a mechanism wherein they are able to empower these local communities on both sides, the fishermen communities, to in engage in sustainable fishing. Point number one. Take Let's go forward. Again, Sri Lanka alleges that Indian fishermen engage in deep sea trawling. Okay, using mechaniz mechanized trawlers, not deep sea fishing, trawling. Alright. Next problem of area of bone of contention, the influence of China. Okay. Forget the port, Hamban Tota port, aap sabko pata hai. The problem with China now, one most recent problem. You find that the Chinese spy ships, there is a spy ship that they have, uh, it's called uh, Yuan Hang 5. Okay, a spy ship which has been in the Hamban Tota port lodged there. Okay, you must have heard of this, guys. Have you heard of this? The Yuan Hang 5, at least, even if you don't know the name, you'll know that a Chinese spy ship has been lodged at the Hamban Tota port for a long time. India went ahead and launched a diplomatic mission, in fact, a diplomatic campaign to get that not to happen. However, what you find is that Sri Lanka's hands are tied to. Okay. It's not that they want to welcome the Chinese port or the Chinese vessel, the Chinese uh, spy ship, but their hands are tied how? Sri Lanka, if you have heard of recently, was in a huge mess. Did you guys, uh, have? you must have followed it. Their president had to escape the country because there was a huge economic mess. Yes, people were queuing up for ration, for petrol, for all sorts of basic necessities of life. Then the public discontent arose to such an extent that a people-led movement came and eventually the incumbent president had to vacate his office, leave his office, escape. Yaad hai wo? Ya bhool gaya? Yaad hona chahiye? Theek hai? So, this happened there. Okay. So, now, this again, we'll discuss the movement. What was the whole movement about? What you also find is that Sri Lanka's problems arise because 20% of its total debt is owed to China. So, in spite of the fact that India, in spite of our say, all close relationships, we tell them that go ahead, get this ship out, the Yuan Hang 5 from your Hamban Tota port. Okay. In fact, Yuan Hang 6, uska chata version bhi aaya tha, when we were launch, testing the Agni 6, okay, or Agni 5, I think it was. I'm not sure. We are testing one Agni missile. Yuan Hang 6 had, in fact, also come. A spy ship with increased surveillance capacities. Again, India had launched a protest then also. Theke. So, why is it? Because again, its hands are tied. 20% of total debt you are owing to China. How is China using this fact to arm twist China? Uh, Sri Lanka is also what we will seek to understand in this class. Okay. Now, there is also the accusation that there is alleged interference by intelligence agencies. In fact, that movie, uh, Madras Cafe, so, what you find is, say, the local level intelligence guiding political will or political will guiding local level intelligence. That conversation needs to be had. However, what you find is that off late, there is a lot of political collaboration rather than this happening. Okay? Ha, must be Agni 5 dance floor, to the best of my recollection. Okay? Let's go forward now and have a look at what happened in Sri Lanka. I mentioned na, the whole movement that happened. People were standing in lines, queues for petrol, diesel, food, water, ration, everything. So, what had happened? This movement was called the Aragalia movement. Okay, again, important from the pre perspective. Aragalia means people's will, again in Sinhalese. Okay, the struggle, in fact, it means people's will or struggle. Okay, so the struggle was against what? Against mismanagement by the Sri Lankan government, which put the entire country's future in jeopardy. Okay, so to oust President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in the face of massive economic crisis. The crisis, 20% of that crisis is thanks to 
the Chinese government. 20% of the debt is owed to them, which means 20% of the blame to Lena hi padega. Okay? Now, since then, what you find is that the Sri Lankan government has managed to implement challenging prescriptions that were put forward by the IMF. Again, the IMF going ahead and introducing structural reforms in the Sri Lankan economy. All right. So, IMF went ahead, introduced structural reforms, hard reforms. Sri Lanka had to take that. It was a hard pill to swallow. But then it has worked out for them so far. And because of those reforms, what you find now is that there is political stability. A certain sense of political stability has arrived in Sri Lanka. Okay. Now, following the crisis, there has also been a significant geopolitical turnaround in Sri Lanka towards India. This is very, very important from the mains perspective. Why? I'll tell you. The question we'll take a look at what was asked in mains. And you will realize why this particular sequence is important for you to understand. How we began from, say, Deepavamsa and Mahavamsa. And now we are coming to 2023. Exactly what the UPSC question asked. We'll take a look at that too. Okay. So when the Sri Lanka crisis began to develop, India decided to be the net security provider in the region, a very important line. What does a net security provider mean? That you have gained so much of relevance within your local neighborhood that you are able to go ahead and help the neighboring countries out, take them within your say umbrella. So China aspires to do that. India also aspires to do that. that whenever you have say countries around it that are in need of say a particular help, you will find that India steps up immediately. Why is it? Obviously, goodness of heart is there. Vasudev Kutumbakam, good. Yes, I agree all of that. But more importantly is the posturing. That now we have the capability to not just sustain ourselves, but also our neighbors. That's how you win goodwill. Vaccine Maitri. Or you, when you had the Nepal earthquake, the India, Indian government had sent massive amount of relief. Why was that? Obviously, the humanitarian angle is paramount in that. But also the fact that India aspires to be a net security provider. A solution to all problems in its immediate neighborhood. Except say Pakistan. Okay. Are you able to understand that net security provider is important? Hai? Okay. Let's go forward now. So how did India and Sri Lanka collaborate? India offered Sri Lanka assistance through multiple lines of credit. You know, all the debt reconciliation measures were introduced. Basically to help Sri Lanka tide over this crisis. This economic crisis that they were in, India gave them money through, say, bilateral means also, multilateral means also. Multilateral me kya 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 India ne? Used its position in the Quad and G20 presidency. If you have been following the official documents or my class where we discuss uh, the G20 presidency in detail, you will always find that the Indian side talks about the collective good of the Global South. Ye line hamesha rahega. Global South, collective good. Debt restructuring for the Global South. Climate mitigation adaptation for the Global South. Climate financing for the Global South. This is what India does. When you are speaking for the collective, which means you have the support of the collective. Okay. So India used these forums, multilateral forums to go ahead and uh, address the problems of the middle income countries who are again in bad debt. Prime example, Sri Lanka. Now what you also find is, that IMF and the Paris Club, again important from the pre-perspective, ki Paris Club kya hota hai? So India worked with the IMF and the Paris Club to alleviate Sri Lanka's economy. Now what is the Paris Club? Ek hota hai jo paise dete hai. Ek hota hai jo paise lete hai. Paris Club is a group of 22 nations or entities because you have the European Union also. So it's not a nation, it's an entity, a monetary union. So you have 22 entities that are a part of a group, a collective group, the rich boy clubs. Rich boy club hota na? Vai hai. They come together and what did they do? Whose role is to find and coordinate sustainable solutions to the payment difficulties experienced by those who need money. So the rich boys come together and then they say, okay, so X needs this much, this much money, unable to give. What can we do to help X right now? Ye bias country yahi karte hai. It has, again, mostly you'll find Western nations, okay? In terms of, say, Oceania, Asia, Africa, and Southern America, Australia is there, South Korea is there, South Africa is there, Brazil is there. Baki sare Western nations. India is not a part of the Paris Club, first things first. 
in spite of the fact that India is not a part of this rich boys club, what you find is that India works closely with the IMF and the Paris club to make sure that Sri Lanka's debt concerns are taken care of. Now you might, the counter question from your side and a natural counter question will be, China ne kya kia? We'll discuss that in the next slide. How completely different are the Indian and the Chinese uh, thought process? Okay, we often discuss this. You must be reading in your articles also. Yes, we'll take a live example as to how the Indian thought process and the Chinese thought process are completely different. बहुत अच्छा ये आपको लगेगा सुनके अभी, ठीक है? So India is not a member of the Paris Club. So now you find what you find is India became the first country to go ahead and assure the IMF. It also co-chaired a common debt treatment and restructuring plan for Sri Lanka. Okay. It extended a 12-year loan repayment time. Moratorium of 12 years was provided. Okay. What is moratorium? कि आपको एक reprieve दिया जा रहा है. You know, you provided a reprieve that go ahead. The loan that you are supposed to return this year, take your own time. 12 साल में देना कोई tension नहीं. Imagine for a country which is struggling with its economy to be given a moratorium of 12 years. In comparison, the Chinese bank gave a moratorium of two years. The divergence you have to note. Okay. Fact based analysis करेंगे यहाँ पे कोई ideological ये नहीं है मुझे ना मुझे China से उतना लगाव है ना hate we need to understand on facts okay so India gave a moratorium of 12 years Chinese side two years okay India also continues its investments for the Trincomalee and Jaffna energy projects these are renewable energy projects that the India government has invested money in and now what you also find is that in uh, say a uh, oil pipeline has now been agreed to Okay, UPI has been agreed to. We'll take a look at that. Why? What? I, why is this happening? Why is it that Sri Lankan and Indian government have now decided to build an oil pipeline? Because when the Aragalia movement was going on, yes, the struggle for uh, against President Rajapaksa was happening. Well, the primary problem was that Sri Lanka's energy security was completely threatened. So now a problem was there. How are they looking to address it? Next door neighbor India, with its own direct oil pipeline, banao. okay. There is also a proposal for building a land connectivity border, in fact, a common bridge between the two countries. UPI expected. UPI is a flagship product when we are looking to engage with the developing world. All right. So all of this has been signed. We'll take a look at that. So India's approach, obviously, significant goodwill, which is why you find that the whole influence of China, Sri Lanka, say in 2020, ah, ये बहुत हम लोग सुन रहे थे उस टाइम. Now it has come back. And the pendulum has swung and now it is India and Sri Lanka's love story again. Okay. Now China's approach has been criticized. We looked at India's approach, what India has done. Let's look at the Chinese approach now, what China did wrong. All right. Ye dekhe. Firstly, passive response, sheer limitations of their system that they work in. Okay. How does the Chinese funding mechanism work? Two minutes mein samjho aap. I am the Chinese Premier. You are a government contractor. Okay. Now, you win a project in Sri Lanka. You are heavily subsidized by the government. Which means, the deficit financing that we discussed. Man lo ki aapko Sri Lanka mein 100 rupees ka. If you are to make a project worth 100 Chinese rupees or Chinese yen in Sri Lanka. Okay. Now, you have quoted, suppose, 70 rupees. The rest of the money... The 30 comes from the Chinese government. After that, the contract is awarded to Chinese people, Chinese contractors. They carry out the work. What is happening here? Right from, say, the ideation to the financing to the implementation is done by China, by Chinese individuals. Who will further Chinese interests? Do you understand that? India does not attach any preconceived limitations on its energy projects. कि अगर ट्रिंकोमली और जाफना में हम बना रहे हैं तो सिर्फ इंडियन ही काम करेंगे ऐसा कुछ नहीं है चाइना का वो स्ट्रेट अवे होता है कि अगर हमारा प्रोजेक्ट हमारे पैसे से बन रहा है तो हमारे लोग ही बनाएंगे डू यू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस सो व्हाई एज अ श्रीलंकन वुड यू लाइक टू वर्क विद द इंडियंस और द चाइनीज ओके सो ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ श्रीलंका टोटल डेट ओड टू चाइना चाइना ऑल्सो कंटिन्यू टू शेल्फ श्रीलंका रिक्वेस्ट फॉर असिस्टेंस एंड डेट रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग वेर एज इंडिया स्ट्रेट अवे अग्रीड China dithered on it. They provided a moratorium of <coughs> two years only. Their Exim Bank 
a two year moratorium as opposed to 12 year moratorium by india and china's whole de debt restructuring plan for uh, sri lanka was only agreed to <coughs> excuse me because japan uh, and india and imf came together on a single platform if these countries hadn't come together huh, the paris club india and japan china wouldn't have agreed so you would have found sri lanka going deeper into the economic crisis that the helping hand that was offered by the world came only because say the uh, uh, india japan and the paris club the rich boys club came together to bail sri lanka out china was in no mood to do that okay china also declined to participate in the common re debt restructuring process okay whereas india has let economics and connectivity do the talking do you understand this now how is the indian approach inherently different from the chinese yes so when you write say vasudev kutumbakam in your answers you know many people criticize this that it's an old concept ha huh? it has no concept it has no relevance in real politic is what they mention okay they use this term very frequently and wrongly by the way ha huh? that vasudev kutumbakam has no interest or no relevance in real politic will i back to differ this working out pretty well in uh, sri lanka in fact okay it this works out well when we engage with the global south vaccine maitri is what a reflection of uh, vasudev kutumbaka ye to hum kyu dete kisi ko and this buys india goodwill this puts india as on the map in the immediate neighborhood you become a net security provider you know that countries will turn to you when the moment of crisis comes when the moment of crisis comes in your life whom do you turn to your most trusted ally your parent your friend your partner whichever yes same relationship in international relations clear so now uh, let's look at dispute area the kachatibu island okay uh, uh, commonly asked question hote hai is pe kachatibu pe so let's quickly have a look at it also okay so now you find this island here I'll, if i have to just show you the map kyunki map ke bagair ye dikhaunga to unfair hoga okay so the kachatibu island is i believe just half way somewhere here okay we're looking at somewhere here this place now the kachatibu island was formed due to volcanic origin and what you also find is that it has been a bone of contention between both india and sri lanka in fact this island changed hands frequently during the history okay at for some time it was a part of say kingdoms that were in sri lanka for a certain amount of time it was a part of a kingdom that was coming out of madurai okay so historically india sri lanka dono ka hota raha turn by turn then came the britishers messed it up completely like they always do okay so kachatibu island a small uninhabited island in park street that connects the bay of bengal and the arabian common ncert level knowledge it's a disputed territory i find articles writing that it's a uh, i was reading an article and i was quite surprised to you uh, yes kachatibu conflict is what they written okay well it's not a conflict Yes, there is violence, localized violence, but end of the day, it was a dispute. It's no more a dispute, also now. Okay, so the disputed territory between Lanka and India, claimed until 1976 by India, now administered by Sri Lanka. Kachatibu Islands also have a lot of religious importance. So Saint Anthony's Shrine is in Kachatibu, and so again, you have individuals from say India. and sri lanka who frequent saint anthony shrine in fact a major fair is also held there annually okay so india sri lanka signed a maritime boundary agreement and the agreement was signed by indira gandhi and uh, the sri lankan president i don't know the name but i know from our side it was indira gandhi okay and so use only for religion saint anthony's festival the particular festival the fair that occurs every year and also for resting and net drying which means indian fishermen can go there chill out net sukhao wapas aa jao fishing allowed nahi hai okay that deep sea trawling that we discussed not allowed however what you find is that indian fishermen push the boundaries they regularly in fact go towards very uh, close to kachatibu or even beyond that which is why you have say aggression coming from the sri lankan side and it's not like the indian fishermen want to do it also its problem is what that fish number is depleting due to actions by mechanized trawling which is again affecting both fishermen from both sides indian fishermen also sri lankan fishermen also theek okay? hai so 
Indira Gandhi signed this and ceded Kachatibu Island to Sri Lanka. Then you had uh, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, J. Jaya Lalita, who went ahead and challenged this. That how can you cede a uh, particular uh, territory to, the, uh, to another country? Then you had the famous Berubari case that came up. Okay. The court ruled in the Berubari case that the secession of Indian territory to another country has to be ratified by parliament through amendment of the constitution. And then the government of India explained their position saying, yes, we had done this. All historical evidences were taken into account. And thus, now you find Kachativu is a part of Sri Lanka. Clear? Okay. Simple slide. So, this is it. Look at this. This is the Kachativu island here. And you are looking at these areas. You know, the problem of trawlers is the primary concern in this area. If you have been again following the environment classes, the environment uh, topics that we do, you will know that this area is famous for what? Very famous. Yad his kanam, Dugong. This area is also famous for sea cucumbers. Okay. What are sea cucumbers? These are organisms, okay, civil uh, uh, sea cucumbers, which are like scavengers. Okay. And you find them in the benthic zone, the seafloor zone. Okay. However, their fight, uh, their larvae are the ones that uh, are on the surface of the sea. Okay. So, sea cucumber, important for you to remember. Dugong pehle pucha gaya hai, kaafi dafa. Ye padke jana hai aapne. Ye dono in fact dhyan rakhna hai is side se. Thik hai? Park Strait, Gulf of Manar, simple hai. Now, the recent visit by the Sri Lankan president and the meet with our representatives, what all was arrived at? These five. Number one, our flagship project, we are sending UPIs. Okay. Then, a petroleum pipeline, because again, during the Aragalia movement, you had the energy crisis. Okay. So, if a problem exists, solution needs to be come at. This is the solution. Who is going to help out? Fair weather, all weather friend India. All right. Power grid connectivity, again, energy crisis. Feasibility studies to be conducted on a land bridge between India and Sri Lanka. Okay. Direct people to people connectivity. Imagine that now. From 87, when you had say 1500 Indian soldiers who were martyred, from then on we have come in say less than 30 years where we are going ahead and building direct connectivity. What does this tell you? That all these problems can be taken care of if there is political will. If there is economics, you know, if economy is the focus. You know, it's a, it's a template for say other disputed areas to follow. As to how you overcome a dispute and forge greater people to people, cultural ties, economic ties, all of that happening. Okay? But the problems still remain. Sri Lanka gives India no assurances, primarily because 20% wala problem, that their debt that they owe to China, which is why their hands are tied to. Clear hai? India Sri Lanka ka pura angle mein aapko hai. Right from the beginning till the end. Alright? Let's look at the questions, guys. You will answer this for me. Sea cucumber, dugong and mangroves can be found in the Gulf of Manar. Sea cucumbers are benthic. Larvae are planktonic. Planktonic means uh, floating on the surface of the sea. Floating on the surface of the sea. Phytoplanktons. Isi se samaj jao aap. Okay. Gulf of Man Manar Marine National Park is maintained by Sri Lanka. Identify the correct statements. You will let me know all of these answers in the chat. Continue that momentum on outcome based learning. If you are reading an article, you must be able to solve questions. Okay. Katha nahi sunna hai mera subha subha. Okay. Deep sea trawling adversely affects the marine ecosystem and increases pollution. Correct or incorrect. And replacement of deep sea fishing boats can help reduce the environmental costs of industrial fishing. Identify the correct statements. We have discussed what is deep sea trawling. What are the problems that you sab ek saath khich ke leke jate ho. You know, like your bori bistar band ke jana wala. Aap pura sea ka bori bistar band dete ho ek bar mein. Thik Alright, this is the question, the mains question for the day guys. 150 words, previous year question of 2022 mains. Okay, let me know if you are able to answer this question through all the points that we discussed today. Let me know. 
India is an age old friend of Sri Lanka. Discuss India's role in the recent crisis in Sri Lanka in the light of the preceding statement. The Honorable UPSC asked this question. Now you know where to begin from. Age old friend matlab thoda age old se hi shuru karo. Shuru karo Deepa Vamsa or Maha Vamsa se. Aur story khich ke lao 2023 tak. With special focus, uh, focus on the Aragalia movement. India's areas of convergence with Sri Lanka. Okay. India's areas of dispute that have been overcome by both the countries. As well as the future challenges. Will you be able to answer this question now for me? Have I given you all the fodder material response required for this question? Let me know in the chat. And if you understood these two topics, India, Sri Lanka and the no confidence motion that will be coming up in uh, two hours, well, go ahead, leave me a like. Okay. Honestly, one, one thing I'll tell you guys, like me to you, huh? I long for the day when my class will be like in my class. It hasn't come yet. So, I can only request my students that go ahead. Leave me a like. As, a, as an educator, it's my small minor goals. Like you have minor goals, no? Weekly goals, uh, say fortnightly goals. I also have minor goals. This is one of my goals. Okay. So answer this question. And this is my email ID, guys. Bhuvan.jha at studyiq.com. For those of you who are sending me your answers on a regular basis, I am very appreciative of your efforts. I try and send you uh, individual feedback on a daily basis. I hope that helps. Okay. And, and so, uh, for those who are not sending me answers, I request you. Okay, now I have 30-40 answers on a daily basis, so I can evaluate all of them. Imagine if I have say 200 answers on a daily basis, I will not be able to do that. Okay, I am human after all. So, right now is the time. I can help you. Go ahead. Give you whatever little feedback I have to offer and you can use it or throw it depending on your uh, convenience. Okay, so this is my email ID. Do send in the answers. Meanwhile, this also closes guys. Okay. 31st, अगले साल की तैयारी के लिए जो जिस तरह से हमें comprehensively approach करते हैं यहाँ सुबह हर सुबह, the way we discuss our topics, no, from uh, eternity, from age old till 2023 जो अभी recent हुआ है, this is the focus and in fact the method that is employed in this course for every topic under the sun, okay? Now whatever I've told you so far. Right now, I'll provide you with, say, the whole PDF in my Telegram channel. In the classes, the paid batches, you get a gist of whatever I said, including the PDF and a summary of the answer, a model answer. Okay. So, you can understand it will be of immense use to a student <coughs> who is genuinely serious. Okay. Again, if you're willing to do it yourself, all the best. I'm always here for your guidance. Okay. I'm not going to say no. But again, my constraints are limited. You will understand my constraints. Okay. So go ahead. If this is what interests you, the way we learn our subjects here, I am associated with the English batch. Okay. Use the code BA Live. This is the second batch. We are only opening this till the 31st. After that, this plane takes off. And uh, so I hope many of you join us on this journey. All right. The last topic for the day National Bio Broadcasting Day. Okay. Broadcasting. Bolne ki prakriya, jo ki airwaves se jata hai. Okay. So, you have two major broadcasters in India. One, All India Radio, also called as Akashwani. Number two, Doordarshan. Theek hai? So, likh lije isko. When you discuss broadcasting in India, it's just two organizations, AIR and Doordarshan. Okay. They are autonomous, in fact, divisions of Prasar Bharati. Prasar Bharati is an autonomous organization. Okay. They, are, they are both divisions of Prasar Bharati. Prasar Bharati is an autonomous organization, okay. a statutory body and it is reports to the Ministry of INB, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. All right. So, 23rd of July, just two days ago, we commemorated the first ever broadcast by the Radio Club of Bombay. Thereafter, it became the Indian Broadcasting Company in 27. Eventually became Akashwani in 1936. Okay. Rabindranath Tagore is credited with coming up with the name Akashwani. All right. You have the signature tune. Agar aap log kabhi koi radio sunne honge na? So, there is a signature tune of All India Radio that starts their broadcast. Okay. It's uh, composed by Walter Kaufman. 
all right walter kaufman all right a jewish uh, refugee okay he made the particular signature tune of all india radio some of the most important names that you can remember okay one name is melville de mello i'll tell you what he kabhi aapko koi kitab mein nahi milega but i should i suggest that you go ahead and google about him just for 5 minutes melville de mello is a legend in the field of broadcasting in india so today we in the name of broadcasting we have see tv news and otts and this and that hundreds of platforms exist we are talking about a time when information dissemination was the monopoly of the government so melville de mello is in fact one of the voices uh when gandhi ji was martyred assassinated so his last yatra till he was to be cremated so that was broadcast on all india radio and melville de mello gave the running commentary of that particular journey all right so important name again for you to remember what does all india radio do inform educate entertain why inform because it has an obligation it's a public service broadcaster which means it will have programs for all stakeholders of the society so you will have programs for say agriculturists you will have program for say women for children for senior citizens okay so which is why certain programs or certain broadcasts are not revenue feasible some programs are revenue feasible okay so why am i telling you all this because as a civil service aspirant first consider this should the government of india get into broadcasting number one question that you need to ask yourself like you had say in previous times the questions are asked that should government make watches or make soaps you know you had organizations that were there earlier that were part of the government of india now obviously have been uh, not don't exist anymore in fact theek okay. so should government get into broadcasting now if you choose to say yes well the obvious reasons you can back them up with is why because information warfare is real fact checking fake news is real which means you need government control outlets to counter propaganda okay countering propaganda is one of the primary uh, contributions of all india radio also that you have say radio pakistan okay radio pakistan and its relationship with all india radio so you find say in pak occupied kashmir now the weather updates are provided on doordarshan and all india radio all right so radio pakistan also launches propaganda propaganda programs against say the indian side okay all india radio also launches counter propaganda programs so information warfare is real which means you need outlets like these okay at the same time some might agree that will just before elections you have say the contestants the the candidates they get air time on all india radio and doordarshan to go and have publicity talk about their proposal their reforms their vision for the government dekha hai wo kabhi general election ke pehle ya state election ke pehle hota hai where recognized political parties their representatives are sent to the offices of doordarshan all india radio they get a particular time slot 15 minutes 20 minutes 10 minutes depending on that ratio of their representation they get to speak to the audience this is in fact mentioned in the representation of people act 1951 theek hai to agar aap keh rahe ho ki all india radio doordarshan band kar do then where does that public service broadcasting happen who is going to make programs for say the agriculturists jab national disaster management authority okay the ndma you are given a survival kit okay whenever there is a problem no if you go at the look at the website of ndma the survival kit usme kya kya hona chahiye the primary one of the primary co- constituents of that survival kit is a radio why medium wave radio broadcasting is the last uh, uh, last scope of communication during times of crisis when you had the chennai floods guys i don't know if you guys know this or if you remember but when you had the chennai floods all of these airtel Vod- vodafone jio phio sab band ho gaye the yes there was no way you could communicate with the government of chennai or at least the administration of chennai that time all india radio chennai was the one that came up and their frequencies were used to in fact transmit information samajh rahe ho so you looking at it from the natural disaster perspective also important information warfare important okay again political considerations people to people engagement people to political engagement you know important these are the reasons why all india radio and doordarshan are extremely important 
okay and more so for you students if you ever want to plan to aspire to watch news may i suggest stick to just air and dd okay there is no point watching any other news in fact if you want analysis come join me here at 8 o'clock in the morning other times stick to these two channels only that's the only of use to you okay air largest radio network in the world covers more than 99% of india's territory what's air's motto guys can someone tell me the motto of air what is the uh, motto of air bataiyega mujhe google karke batao okay all right section 39a political parties to have air time now you have in fact digital vouchers for this particular thing no now the election commission gives digital vouchers so i i have was fortunate enough to be a part of this process where i saw this happen live in front of my eyes okay where the representatives from election commission of india came the representatives of all prominent parties came okay representatives of air and doordarshan were there and then a chit system a lottery system is taken out to determine the order of as to who gets to go first and speak to the audience ye bhi to question aana chahiye na aapko ki theek hai aapko political parties hain wo audience se baat karenge kis kram mein kis sequence mein what's the sequence political party abc who gets to speak first that's decided by a lottery okay under the direct supervision of representatives from the election commission of india i was fortunate to see this so which is why i'm able to tell you all right okay this question now vivid bharti service vbs vbs or radio salon ka story pata hai kya aapko radio salon is sri lanka so in the middle what happened was during indira gandhi's time uh, you had air that was forbidden from playing hindi songs or say you know just songs okay so radio salon because there was a vacuum audience wanted songs audience wants entertainment so a vacuum existed radio salon came up ate that particular audience share of all india radio all right so vivid bharti service does it focus on hindustani and carnatic music prasar bharti a statutory autonomous organization set up by an act of parliament prasar bharti comprises air dd and pib identify the correct statements all right go ahead answer the questions that i have for you a to f okay you should be able to answer all plus the mains question that i have provided you with i am specially keen to see answers for this because i have discussed india sri lanka in depth today iske baad aap aaram se koi bhi sawal laga sakte ho india sri lanka ka okay if you have any doubts go ahead and just read about uh, the 13th amendment ek reading laga lo baki aapko clear hai anisha what was your question i sorry i missed it can you repeat your question if you are watching this sorry i didn't see that time pe nahi dikha okay that completes our question if you have any questions for me that completes our class for today okay three topics we have done in toto in detail if you have any questions regarding the three topics quickly tell me or else we'll call it a wraps meanwhile join me ha huh? this evening 9 pm we'll discuss uh, vijay divas kargil kargil day we'll discuss what was the events of kargil day what what happened during the kargil war how did that change india's security doctrine that also we'll discuss because upsc aspirants ko sirf entertainment nahi information bhi chahiye if there are no other questions or if you have any questions you have my email id so aap mujhe aaram se email likh sakte ho theek hai i will expect your answers in the comment box i will also expect your answer to the mains question make sure that you send me all of that okay it will help you theek hai all right guys have a wonderful day thank you for joining thank you for being so patient with me i hope this class was of benefit for you if it was go ahead and quickly leave me a like i I'll, i'll i'll i'd really appreciate that okay and if you so like go ahead and join me on my telegram channel all right i'll be sharing this entire pdf by say 12 1230 also you'll find all the latest information regarding my sessions and a lot more is planned in fact right now i'm focusing on the mains answers once the mains gets over you will see a lot of focus on this uh, particular telegram channel in so far as giving you the resources for your prelims is concerned theek hai uh deepak uh, the timing for environment class okay uh, so i looked at the poll and my students are little confused so it's 21% in the morning 21% in the evening i was thinking of doing it in the evening only okay i'll let you know the timings i have got a general sense ki class ko kya zarurat hai to main sham ka hi hoga i'll let you know i'll update all the people in my telegram channel arka thank you so much thank you so much i i really appreciate uh, your feedback thank you monica thank you okay guys 
आई कॉल इट अरेप्स आप लोग जाओ नाश्ता वास्ता करो फटाफट हैव अ लुक एट द थर्टीन अमेंडमेंट एंड आंसर द क्वेश्चन ओके मेक दिस टू आर टाइम पीरियड फ्रॉम एट टू टेन द मोस्ट प्रोडक्टिव पीरियड ऑफ यू डे ओके आई शेल सी यू गाइज टूमारो मॉर्निंग एट एम एंड दिस इवनिंग टू एट नाइन पी एम फॉर अ स्पेशल ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन विजय दिवस हैव अ वंडरफुल डे हैव अ प्रोडक्टिव डे